Okay, so what we want to show is this is the traditional C minor, C major, Do, Re, Mi scale. It has no D flat and no G flat. And here is our reference area for that scale. And you can see that when we highlight all the possible notes in those in the C minor, C major, there's no D flat and there's no G flat, just like that. No D flat, no G flat. But we started working with a traditional song from 1896 called To a Wild Rose by Edward McDowell in 1896. And we discovered we were trying to annotate the chords that it's not this scale. It's this scale. It's using a variation where, and we'll show you, we'll prove it over here. We'll highlight all the possible notes. And you'll notice that there's no D and there's no F. No D and no F. Other than that, the scales are perfectly comparable. They have minor modes, major modes, mi major urges, minor urges, major nuns, minor nuns, and shared nuns. So this is fascinating to us, and this is the DNA for the new scale. Ladies and gentlemen, this is a recap of Composing for Change, Part 1, Goals. In today's episode, we set out to... We wanted a creative space to explore and lean into in this new era. And To a Wild Rose, which we heard late last year, has a lot of uh, funky chords in it. And we would like to analyze them and look at them from the point of our view of working with our extended chords. And we discovered that 125 years ago, this guy, Edward McDowell, was using an alternative 10 note scale. Um, and we weren't able to find any mention of that in a quick check of Google and stuff. Um, so the difference, as we showed you, is that it excludes D flat and B flat instead of those other two notes. And the excluded notes are three steps apart rather than five. It can still be shown as a heptatonic seven note major, seven note minor, blah, blah, blah. Um, so that's what we spent the time on. We're going to play this for you. Uh, it's actually the original piece transposed and we've just started analyzing it. Um, the other thing we did in this series is we completed our narrative description. This series shares composing in music and cross-dimensional thinking, and it's called Composing for Change. And um, our, our goals are to explore further nuances of sound and animation, lyrics, scale extensions, which clearly we are doing big time right now, and pattern explorations. So we just we just jumped on in. And we felt that pushing, we thought we were going to a traditional, this, this traditional scale, this one. We thought we were going into this, but no, we ended up going into this, uh, which only became evident after we figured out blah, 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 blah. So what we're going to do is play this uh, for you. It's not really been changed. This is the original composition. What's being changed is it got transposed. And we are starting to annotate it, as you can see right here. So here we go. So there's a lot of things we liked about working with this piece. We feel like we're starting to learn more things by trying to take it apart. 
uh, I mean, look at what this guy's doing. It's not just a cadence line. He's he's parroting the melody in here and up here and all kind of stuff is going on. All kind of good stuff. So anyway, um, our ideas for next time are to keep working with it. Annotate the rest of the lines. You can see we only got a few of them. Uh, there's also some dyads up here in this line. We'd like to look at the interaction between those two lines. Shout outs to Clothesline, Iron Maiden, and Vivid Music One. We appreciate you. Tune in next time to see what happens. Do take care, do come back, and do keep on streaming.